Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I'd take a quick look at the NAD C700. It's a $1,500 all-in-one streaming integrated amplifier, and it is really an excellent one-box solution, no question about it. Um, very good form factor, ni nicely laid out, good connectivity on the back, and we'll spin it around and look at that in a few minutes. Um, nice big display. We'll talk about that in just a second. It is rated at 80 by 2 into 8 ohms, 80 by 2 into 4 ohms, not real dynamic. Um, its dynamic power output, I think, is 120 watts just, you know, for, for short bursts. Um, it is got a built-in DAC, 24192. I think it's an ESS 9010 chip, which is a little bit older. Uh, it's been in the market for a couple of years, but again, I don't think the chip matters as much as the surrounding circuitry and the analog output stage. So, and, and the DAC actually performs quite well. Um, it also will do MQA, it'll do FLAC and WAVE and AIFF. It does not do DSD, even though it does have a hard drive connection on the back, a, a USB Type A. Um, it is, uh, it will do the following streaming services, and I apologize, I got to read from the list here. Amazon, Spotify, Tidal, TuneIn, Napster, Deezer, CoBuzz, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. It does do free internet radio from TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio. It is AirPlay compatible, AirPlay 1 and 2. It is also Rune ready. So really nice comprehensive set of uh, features in and uh, available through the Blue OS app. Now the Blue OS app, not one of my favorites as far as the visual kind of how I interact with it, but that's just me. It is fast. It's stable. It's rock solid. It works beautifully. Um, it gives you access to a ton of stuff. The unit does have base management. So in the app, you can control crossover points and base level and all kinds of stuff, separate base and trouble controls as well. Um, so a ton of uh, available features built into Blue OS. Um, and again, it's been around for years. It's very well developed uh, and works really, really well. Now, the unit itself has great connectivity on the back. Um, it, it, and I can't think of another amp at this price point, maybe the Evo 75 from Cambridge, but I don't think it has the same connectivity as this. It has analog inputs. And one of the party tricks is with that beautiful display is if you have an analog uh, input coming into it, and I'm going to switch over to the analog input real quick. We're going to come back here and there we go. And look at that. We got power meters. It's a really nice function. Now, the power meters are only on the analog input, not if you're streaming. Um, but that's a really nice kind of lovely little feature. Um, and because it has analog inputs, you can do turntables and things like that. We'll talk about it when we look at the back of it. So that's the kind of the overview of the C700. Um, and again, we're going to flip it around. And then once we do that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you my impressions of the sound. So give me a moment to reset and we'll be right back. So here we are looking at the back of the NAD C700. Um, pretty well laid out, honestly, other than these are kind of cheap and, I, and the spacing is terrible, especially if you like to use dual banana plugs. So anyway, you've got some 12 volt triggers. This is a, a remote IR input. If you have a remote little IR window or uh, receiver, you can plug in here. Let's say this was in a cabinet or something where you're not gonna see it, which is a shame because the front display is kind of nice, especially when you connect the analog inputs because then you get power meters. So again, control here for, you know, Crestron, Elan, AMX, whatever. Two analog inputs. This is a nice feature on a, a, an amp like this because it allows you to connect either, let's say you have an external CD player, maybe one that doesn't have a digital out, or maybe one that you really like the sound of just natively, you can connect it. Let's say you have a phono. You can, as long as you have a phono preamp, you can connect up to this. And that gives this some additional flexibility, I think. It does have a pre-out, and that's nice if you want to run out to, a, let's say, a different outboard amplifier. Uh, you can use this as a preamp. Or you can use it to run out to stereo subwoofers. Now, there's no bass management on the pre-out, so it's full range. You'll have to use whatever uh, bass management functions are built into the subwoofers you connect to. Now, it does have a dedicated sub out and it does have internal base management. It doesn't have any room correction, but it does have internal base management and you can vary the crossover point and the level from the app, which is really nice. 
does have a coax, spit if coax in, and does have a spit if optical in, which again is a very nice function if you want to run that, maybe that vintage CD player has a digital out, you can run into this and use the 24-bit 192D to A converter in here. Does have HDMI ERC to connect your TV, and of course your TV remote control will control the volume of this. RJ45 jack for network, and a USB-A if you want to connect a hard drive with files on it. Now, the key thing is this does not do DSD, so they would have to be FLAC wave or uh, AIFF files. It's a little service port. I'm not sure exactly what that is. And then the standby button just puts the unit to sleep when you're not using it. Um, so it's kind of powered down, uh, ready to go when you open up the app and, and wake it up. So anyway, that's the backside of the NADC 700. Uh, and we'll spin it around and we'll talk about sound quality. Well, as you can see on the back, a lot of features, a lot of great connectivity. I mean, excellent connectivity. I can't think of anything else at the $1,500 price point that offers as much connectivity as this does. Um, the Cambridge Evo 75 is kind of in the same price range, but I don't think it has the goes into and goes out as that the NAD does. So really compelling product, great footprint, great build quality, uh, excellent build quality. And, you know, the Blue, o Blue OS software, while the visually not to my liking, or eh, I, I don't mind it, um, but solid, rock solid, stable, fast, easy to use, that kind of stuff. And, and again, access to a ton of stuff. So let's talk about sound quality. I connected this up to three different pairs of speakers and uh, connected it up to the like DBR 62s. I connected it up to the monitor audio silver 100s, and I connected up to the Wharfdale Diamond 8.3s. And of those three, the Wharfdale Diamond 8.3 was able to kind of rein this in a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. But in fairness, the Worfies sound amazing on everything and they're very forgiving and um, they they can scale up, but they can also, uh, you know, make a bad recording sound okay and make a great recording, a good recording sound great. Uh, and they can make a harsh, little bit strident amplifier sound much smoother than it probably would be on other speakers. The monitor audio was not a good combination. It's just too much energy in the upper mid range and high frequencies on that particular one. And that's just the voicing of the monitor audio on the right amp that those sing like you will not believe. Um, I thought the ELAC uh, DBR62s was the most balanced and gave me the best kind of look into the sound quality of the amplifier. And uh, so on bass, you know, it's class D. You'd expect it to have really good bass, and it does, and it's good authoritative bass. It's fast, it's quick. Um, it's not the most articulate or detailed, but very pleasant and very, you know, very nice full bass. When we get into the mid-range, we start, for me at least, start running into a little bit of an issue in that it's very thin and kind of sterile in the mid-range. Um, the details are there. Uh, acoustic guitars sound good. Acoustic instruments sound good. Female vocals may be just a little hot, no sibilance, but just a little hot. Male vocals, really good, kind of, um, until you get into the baritone. And I was listening to Luciano Pavarotti, and on a lot of good recordings, you can hear the resonance in his chest because he's a big guy. That was kind of obscured a little bit with this. Um, and I think it's just a characteristic of this particular Class D module they use. In the upper frequencies, uh, upper uh, mid-range, lower treble into the treble itself, uh, really good articulation and detail, a lot of detail maybe a little too much detail in the in the treble, maybe a little etched on the high end. Um, but still, uh, really good sense of air. Uh, it had a, a rock solid center image, decent imaging between the speakers, not a ton of depth. And again, I think that's because it's maybe not as dynamic an amplifier um, as it, you know, as some other amplifiers can be. But this is, you know, again, this is a couple of years old. So there's new technologies. And I'm sure that this will, you know, probably be updated soon by NAD. And, you know, of course, their master series is awesome stuff. So this kind of fits in below that. Um, anyway, so uh, if you have a warm sounding speaker, I think it's a good combination. If you have a forward sounding speaker or anything with horns, I'm not sure I can recommend this. I think it would be a little too much energy in that in the, in the upper mids and, and treble area, uh, especially with a bright sounding speaker or, or a speaker that leans that way. But again, compelling product. I think at $1,500, it's a great value. I think it would uh, it offers a great solution. And again, amazing build quality, amazing connectivity. The, the Blue OS app is rock solid, stable, all of those things. Um, so a compelling product. Just the sound was just not quite to my taste. That's all. So anyway, that's the C700 from NAD. If you liked the uh, video, I would appreciate a like. 
Uh, I would appreciate your subscription. 80% of the folks that watch my videos don't subscribe, and it would really help the channel if you did. The more su subscribers I have, the more credibility I have with the manufacturers to get product in for review so that you guys can see different and new stuff. So that would be really important to me. Uh, comment, please. Anybody's commented? No, I read the comments. I respond to the comments. I love your comments. Share with me your experiences. Share with me your opinions on this. Share with me your playlist. And I'm going to create in the community side, community post, a list of anonymous playlists, Amazon Tidal, Kobuzz, uh, or uh, Spotify. And then we can share music and, and get an idea of what we all listen to and maybe expose ourselves to some new music that we maybe not would, would not normally hear. Excuse me. So that would be really important. Um, in the description of the video disclosure, there are uh, affiliate links from Amazon. If you were to purchase something from one of those links, I do make a small commission, but it doesn't affect your price and it doesn't affect your ability to return a product you're not satisfied with. A little further down in the uh, description are the list of all the equipment I use in my reviews and everything that's here in the studio. Um, also to all of the my playlist, Amazon, Kobuzz, and Spotify. I'd love to have you guys listen to those and share with me your thoughts on it. And really, that's kind of it. So um, I really appreciate the time you guys take to watch my videos. I really do. Um, I'm having a ton of fun doing this, and I'm hoping you're enjoying it and getting something from it. Uh, and if you're not, tell me in the comments, please. Uh, because if I'm not taking care of you guys, then, you know, that's kind of the point of this. So anyway, this is Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi, signing off and telling you to go listen to some music, please. Thanks so much.